as you know, the situations between my country and David's country, they've been tense over the past couple of years. And it was really beyond me and beyond him as well that why the two of us from coming from those countries and different backgrounds can be such good friends and why our people cannot get along. So we decided that we needed some sort of gesture to you know, symbolize that friendship that we share and that the potential for friendship between two different communities. The Doctors Without Borders doesn't represent the government of the United States or the government of any other country for that matter. They're the people-to-people -people interaction. It was interesting because we first ran the idea by Ohio Wesleyan alumni. That was when we first publicly announced it. And even before we had started asking for donations, they were coming forth and offering money. Uh, in support of our mission and so that was really neat and encouraging and it just continued building from there. From the start our swim coach Richard Haas identified that it was probably the environmental factors not the physical factors that would be the most challenging for us being the fact that we're pool swimmers and therefore aren't used to the ocean and waves and also the fact that the English Channel is generally around 60 degrees which is pretty cold uh, particularly for us and so we started off from the beginning trying to adapt to those situations. Uh, you know, I, I can remember back from when we were first trained, we'd do like long multi-hour swims and then we'd hop in the showers and uh, end up doing like a cold shower competition, seeing who could stand in the coldest shower for the longest amount of time. It's particularly hot in Pakistan, um, you, so I had to do lots of things like cold showers, ice baths, and so that was one challenge that I had. But long hours in the pool, naturally, of course, sometimes four to six hours, sometimes one to two. But the training for the cold was very challenging. Well, we found out about the visa, unfortunately, the morning of my flight back to Ohio. And then the day after that, I was going to be flying to England. So it was a bit of a panic moment. I was supposed to be cleaning out my apartment. Um, but sort of dropped all of that and you know as soon as Usman told me got on the phone with Ohio Wesleyan and we, we just I, mean, I didn't put my phone down for four hours it was just non-stop trying to figure out what our options were at this point. But it's a, it was a practical example of the issues David and I were trying to address and it was great to see how people reacted to that and it's not just because people don't care it's just that most people aren't aware of this problem and you saw people from all over the world writing letters to their senators. You saw Ohio Wesleyan University make phone calls everywhere, talk to me on a daily basis, trying to get muster up the whatever was it necessary to get this process done. Uh, the water managed to stay. The waves weren't that big. I think they called them wavelets at that point. Uh, and that, that was going well. Unfortunately, about an hour and a half in, um, combination of factors led to a lot of nausea um, and started battling that for the next two and a half hours and unfortunately the, the result of all of that was that I wasn't able to keep down any food and when you're not able to keep down any food you're not able to supply your body with warmth and unfortunately at that point the cold did start to kick in. Um, and, and it was quite obvious that my stroke was deteriorating and we were a little concerned about hypothermia and certainly didn't want to risk that. The other parts that I ended up swimming, I ended up swimming a total of four times each for a full one hour shift and they actually coincided we were really lucky with the way the, the timing worked out because they coincided with particularly important points where we needed to have people moving quickly. I ended up swimming through the first set of shipping lanes and getting us out of the second set of shipping lanes, which are both kind of dangerous areas because you don't want to get in the way of the freighters um, and you basically you want to be out of those as soon as possible so that those ships can keep moving through. You know, after 13 hours... <laughs> Thank you, it was fun. I wish everybody could have been on the beach and have finished at the same time. People in Pakistan on a general level were very supportive. 
they were just happy to see someone from the upcoming generation or people from the upcoming generation rather coming up and with this great idea and pursuing it wholeheartedly. It was, it was a pretty successful project, not only for us, um, but we were, we were impressed by the amount of support we received, not only from our communities, but also the Ohio Wesleyan community in particular.